Hello my lovelies, Granny Pam here, picking up where we finished uh, the last lesson in John's Gospel and we're in chapter 5. This is from the Bible and I'm reading the Living Study Bible and I'm going to read the passage and then we're going to talk about it. So uh, we just read about Jesus healing the lame man by the pool and uh, we took up his mat and started walking. Anyway, the Pharisees saw him do that. And it was the Sabbath and they didn't like that because they said to him that he was actually doing work by carrying his mat. <laughs> in religion, it really ties us up in knots, doesn't it? But we're all about freedom and relationship with Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father through the Holy Spirit. So now we've come to verse 43. And Jesus um, claims to be the Son of God. So he's referring to picks up. So they began harassing Jesus as a Sabbath breaker. That's the what we were just talking about. Jesus replied, my father constantly does good and I'm following his example. So if you want to know what God is like, you can look at what Jesus does and what he's like and what he says. And then you've got a good idea about what Jesus does. I mean, what God's like, sorry. Then the Jewish leaders were all the more eager to kill him because in addition to disobeying the Sabbath laws, he had spoken of God as his father, thereby making himself equal with God. Jesus replied, the son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing and in the same way. So he's doing it in the same way. For the father loves the son and tells him everything he's doing. And the son will do far more awesome miracles than this man's healing. He will even raise from the dead anyone he wants to, just as the father does. And the father leaves all judgment of sin to his son. So that everyone will honour the son, just as they honour the father. But if you refuse to honour God's Son, whom he sent to you, then you are certainly not honouring the Father. I say emphatically that anyone who listens to my message and believes in God who sent me has eternal life and will never be damned for his sins, but has already passed out of death and into life. I solemnly declare that the time is coming, in fact it is here, when the dead shall hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen shall live. The Father has life in himself, and has granted his Son to have life in himself, and to judge the sins of all mankind because he is the Son of Man. Don't be so surprised. <laughs> Indeed, the time is coming when all the dead in their graves shall hear the voice of God's Son and shall rise again. Those who have done good to eternal life and those who have continued in evil to judgment. But I pass no judgment without consulting the Father. I judge as I am told and my judgment is absolutely fair and just. For it is according to the will of God who sent me, and it is not merely my own. So now we'll go on. The next section, 44, is the verse. Jesus supports his claim. <clears throat> when I make claims about myself, they aren't believed. But someone else, yes, John the Baptist, is making these claims for me too. You have gone out to listen to his preaching. And I can assure you that all he says about me is true. But the truest witness I have is not from a man, though I have reminded you about John's witness so that you will believe in me and be saved. John shone brightly for a while and you benefited and rejoiced. But I have a greater witness than John. I refer to the miracles I do. These have been assigned me by the Father, and they prove that the Father has sent me. 
And the Father himself has also testified about me, though not appearing to you personally or speaking to you directly. But you are not listening to him, for you refuse to believe me. And the one who, and the one sent to you with God's message, that's him. You search scriptures, for you believe they give you eternal life. But the scriptures point to me. This is what Jesus says. Yet you won't come to me so that I can give you this life eternal. Your approval or disapproval means nothing to me, for as I know so well, you don't have God's love living within you. I know, because I have come to you representing my Father God, and you refuse to welcome me, though you readily enough receive those who aren't sent from him but represent only themselves. No wonder you can't believe, for you gladly honour each other, but you don't care about the honour that comes only from God. Yet, it is not I who will accuse you of this to the Father. Moses will. Moses, on whose laws you set your hopes of heaven. For you have refused to believe Moses, and he was writing about me. But you, you refuse to believe him, and so you refuse to believe me. And since you don't believe what he wrote, no wonder you don't believe me either. Now, the Old Testament is the, the prototype, the prophetic type, all leading to Jesus. It's all about Jesus. All the ceremonies, all the, the uh, holidays, um, Moses' law. Jesus didn't come to break the law, he came to fulfill it. He is the fulfillment of everything that Moses wrote about and that the prophets wrote about, Isaiah, Daniel, Jeremiah, the, uh, the minor prophets, and then all the other things. They were all um, images and pictures uh, foretelling, foreshadowing Christ. And so he came to fulfill it. That's what he's meaning by that. So we'll just step back a minute and... Um, Go back to where Jesus claims to be God's son. And so he's saying that we have evidence of miracles. But also um, we need to have faith and stop just always trying to put a smoke screen in the way of believing. Because he's done so much already. There's already so much evidence. So the question is, why don't you just believe and receive him? For he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father unless they come through me. He's the gate. He is the door. He says, behold, I stand on the door. That's the door of your heart and knock. Invite me in. If I come in, I will eat with you and dine with you and we will eat together. And that's how you have eternal life. You ask him in, into your heart. And that's called being born again. Now, the great thing is when we've done that, we have love and joy and peace and we've asked him to forgive our sins. And then he cleanses us. And then when it comes time for judgment, which it talks about in verse 22, um, we know that we're set right because Jesus' own blood paid the price for our sin. So at the time of judgment, um, we're not judged for all of that because Jesus wiped it all away with his blood. And then in verse 25, it talks about the time already coming and the voice of God. You know, God is constantly speaking. It says in the Old Testament, one of the, the prophets, it says, but man in the foolishness of his heart perceives it not. God speaks first this way and then that way, but we do not perceive it. So when you're out in nature and it, it gives you joy or it makes you feel at peace or you're amazed by the beauty, the Bible also tells us that God did that so that you can see how amazingly wonderful he is. That is one voice speaking to you. You can be quiet in your heart and mind and sit quietly and ask God to speak to you and you will feel you might feel something in your heart or some words might come to you 
Some people, not everybody, but some have heard an audible voice. Others have pictures in their minds. Uh, the imagination will show you something. Um, or you will just hear um, a sentence or your name. He will reach out to something that means something to you. He might use a billboard. He might use uh, someone else that you know. And you just, it strikes a chord with your heart. And um, he will help you. For example, years ago, I wanted to know why the Bible was so powerful. And I prayed at my dining room table. Lord, I know it's a good book with good morals and good stories, but I want to know what's so powerful about it. Please show me. Well, two weeks later, I got a book um, by Neil Anderson uh, called The Bondage Breaker. And um, the woman said she'd written a letter. She'd met me once, <laughs> actually at Soul Survivor. And she worked at a Christian bookstore. And um, this new book had come in and God told her to send it to me. And it had taken her two weeks to find out an address of where I was. And so she apologized for the delay. Well, she didn't know I'd ask God this question at my dining room table, but God heard and she was listening. She was tuned into the right frequency. It's like listening to a radio, you know, you twist the knob or you used to, but you have to get the right station, the right um, dial and turn to hear the voice of God. And if you listen, um, he will speak to you. Now, of course, if you want to know what that voice would be like, um, God is not going to ask you to kill anyone or hurt anyone because that's not who he is. He's a God of love, a God of peace. And you can find out what he's like through the Bible and through Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying here. So that's really good news because um, not only is God speaking, but we know that how loving and kind Jesus is, how he takes care of us. He's right there for us all the time. Um, And he also says, uh, Jesus says in verse 19, he can't do anything by himself. Oh, he said it, and that was a bit strange, really. And uh, over the years, I've discovered that I really do need Jesus every day. And that's why we pray the Lord's Prayer every day. Not just as rote, but as a, an example. Each line is a subject to pray into. And uh, I find that um, I need him every day. I need him for good decisions. So after you've worshipped him, holy is your name, and you've addressed him as your father, um, you, you say, give us today our daily bread, and that's what you need for the day. I need wisdom, I need revelation, or I need peace, or please take this anger away from me, or, or help me forgive, or I choose to forgive. So every day we need God to do the regular things, help me with my children, help me drive and not get lost, or whatever it is. You need to talk to him every day. And Jesus did the same thing. Every day he interacted with the Father. And then he says he only does what the Father tells him. Now how good that would be. And I'm talking to myself here too. If we would only do what God was telling us to do. That means at the beginning of the day we would have to set some time aside. And listen, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Is there someone you want me to see? Is there something you want me to say? And then we would have to listen. And then, of course, we enter the hugest battle of our lives and mine. We'd have to watch what we say so that we say the right things and not the wrong things. The right word, the right time is, is life. But the wrong word in the wrong time is death. <laughs> and this is a battle that many of us fight. Um, the Bible calls it the renewing of the mind. And there's so much scripture on the tongue. Um, and uh, there are lots of books written about it. Um, so I don't need to talk to you about that, but you can find them. And so we need to listen to who um, Jesus says God is. And by looking at his example in the Bible here, we can find out how good. And he's with us all the time. You'll notice that in all these stories, Jesus is with the people. And um, shepherds need to be with the people. If you have a pastor who's not with you, I'd question it because Jesus spent three years with his disciple living with them. You know, when he was in Samaria a couple of chapters ago, he spent two days talking with the people there and many of them were saved. So Jesus is the good shepherd. 
He spent time with the people. So if you're a shepherd, spend time with your people. That's how you mentor them. That's how you disciple them. That's how you get to know them so that um, you can help them mature in a, a really good, helpful way. So there we are. Um, he's also backing it up with independent, um, backing his claims up with independent sources and testimonies from John the Baptist and all those disciples who were hanging around at that time. So God bless you, my darlings. Remember to listen to the Lord, um, to ask him what it is that he wants and be with him every day. The reason that the disciples um, shone and people knew they were different was because they were with Jesus every day. And um, if you spend time with Jesus every day, you will be equipped, you will be nurtured, you will be mentored, you will be um, able to live the life that you want to live. And bless you all. This is Granny Pam. Yes, I really am Granny Pam. So I'm signing out and I will see you in the next chapter, which will be Gospel John 6. Bye bye.